Game Pass offers hundreds of games with more being added every month. But don't worry, in this video we're going to go over what's new and some gems worth checking out on Microsoft's gaming service. The One's PlayStation 5 exclusive is now on Xbox Game Pass. That's right, I am talking about Deathloop. You play as Cult, an amnesic trapped in a day-long time loop on a mysterious island called Black Reef, which is run by eight eccentric villains known as Visionaries. Cult is being hunted and killed over and over again by someone named Juliana. The objective of the game? Kill all eight Visionaries in a single day to break the loop and try and stay alive while doing so. If you're not familiar, Arcane are the devs behind games like Dishonored and Prey, both of which are also available on Game Pass. And Deathloop is its most ambitious game to date. It's a culmination of all its design principles, with an intricately designed systematic world, special powers, and an open-ended approach to playstyles, with one major addition set in a time loop. Deathloop was announced for the PS5 before Microsoft acquired Bethesda, making it an exclusive to the fancy new next-gen console in the PlayStation series. But no more! Now, it's on the other fancy next-gen consoles. And PC, which it has been um, for a while now. Anyway, it was GameSpot's 2021 Game of the Year, so for you non-PlayStation players out there, now's the time to jump into one of Arkane's most well-received games. It just oozes coolness. And when you're done playing it, I highly recommend you watch this video I did on the game's troublesome production that led to an 11th hour redesign that made it the game it is today. You should watch it, card in the corner, to check it out. Over the past few years, boomer shooters have been on the rise again. And no, I don't mean shooting games that involve 50 to 7 year old people navigating the comments of Facebook, but the fast paced genre of shooters made popular in the 90s that evolve lots of moving and shooting waves and waves of enemies that explode into mounds of flesh and make you feel like a real sweet dude named something simple like Doom Guy. Proteus is exactly that, but new, while still retaining enough of that nostalgic tinge with filters and 360p resolution and sprite enemies to blow up. And since it's a boomer shooter, that means it has a boomer riffin' metal soundtrack to make you feel like a cool Proteus guy. I don't know if the guy you play as is actually named anything, but I don't care, because to me he's just Proteus guy now. Anyways, the game rips with lots of guts, guns, and guitars, the three G's, as I call them, the essential stamp for all boomer shooters. I've been playing this game a bunch recently, and you know what? I don't know what it's about, but it makes me feel cool, so that's enough for me. And while we're on the topic of the three big G's, Metal Hellsinger, which is very much as close as one can get to guts, guns, and guitars, with an emphasis on guitars. 2016's Doom didn't just put boomer shooters back on the map by revolutionizing the genre altogether, it also gave us a kick-ass metal soundtrack that, in its own right, was just as influential. It was a beautiful marriage and flow state action set to the hardest pulsing metal riffs. It was so damn good it basically inspired a whole new genre of rhythm first person shooter games like BPM, Bullets Per Minute, and now Metal Hellsinger. Metal Hellsinger, however, is taking the metal part very seriously. Its soundtrack is bolstered with heavy metal talent from Trivium, Arch Enemy, and Lamb of God, just to name a few. You'll have to rip and tear your way through demons and monsters to the rhythm of the music, shooting on cue while your eardrums are decimated. Let's keep things dark, brooding, and violent. Moon Scars doesn't feature all the triple G's of the previous games we talked about, but it has one of the G's in all capital letters, and that is GUTS. Moon Scars is a 2D metroidvania set in a grim and unrelenting world, where you play as a warrior made of clay, hell-bent on finding the sculptor who made her, and to understand why she was brought into this gothic macabre moonlit world in the first place. You'll have to use a plethora of weapons to splatter your foes into bits, and master special abilities to navigate this non-linear, brutal, and dark action game. And the animation is just super sick. Enemies are twisted, scary, and fantastical that'll have your palms sweating in some intense fights. And in typical Metroidvania tradition, you'll have to be getting new powers in order to find new areas and fight different enemies. 
Woof, have we found our way into some dark brooding corners on this list. Let's brighten things up a bit, shall we? Because sure, maybe every once in a while you just want to brood around and get drenched in the blood of your enemies. And other times you just want to hop into a colorful world and journey through a place called Rainbow Island, where wiggly slimy things are living creatures that are as happy as happy can be. In Slime Rancher 2, you're not tearing things apart with your bare hands to some sweet metal riffs. Instead, you're collecting these adorable happy balls of goo and making a paradise for you and them to live. It features loads of unique and vibrant environments to explore and tons of slime types to meet along the way. Being a sequel, it of course has new locations and slimes. And also, just in general, it's a pleasant and easygoing change of pace if you need it from, you know, the guts, guns, and guitars of the other games we've talked about. It might look like we're going on the upswing of cute stuff, but don't be deceived, because while Beacon Pines is filled with whimsy animals and cool outfits, it's also riddled with mystery and a creepy adventure to set out on. Beacon Pines is displayed as an interactive book, and in a really cool twist, you play as the reader and the main character of its story, Luca. You'll guide Luca around the story's environments, investigating all its corners, talking to its many characters, but you'll also be navigating an interactive story tree that branches in many different ways, depending on your choices. And in doing so, exploring different outcomes becomes a part of the game's narrative leading you to flip-flop through different versions of the story in order to see the full picture of its mystery. That's a pretty neat way to handle branching outcomes. The last game on the list, some would say, is an oldie at this point, but far from out of date despite taking place nearly 3,000 years ago. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is now on Game Pass. This is the follow-up to the franchise's big leap into the RPG realm after Origins, which is also on Game Pass. Hurling the mythos into ancient Greece, Odyssey put an emphasis on player choice, allowing the player more agency to decide the path they wanted to take and the type of hero they wanted to become. Carrying forward the RPG elements, Odyssey allows players to customize their equipment and build out new special abilities to fit their playstyle. Now, this is some speculation, but considering that Assassin's Creed Origins was added to Game Pass only earlier this year, and now Odyssey, I can't help but assume that maybe, just possibly, we'll be seeing Assassin's Creed Valhalla joining the ranks soon too. So here's to hoping. All right, that's September for Game Pass, a month filled with guns, guts, guitars, cute animals, slimy friends, brooding worlds, and a rainbow island. The list of Xbox Game Pass games just keeps on growing, so why not get out there and try something new? Who knows, maybe Slime Rancher will awaken something in you you didn't know you needed. Or you'll realize that Proteus is a sort of blood-soaked romp you need at the end of a long day. Like a warm bath filled with blood.